Oh, hello, hello, and what is going on, everybody? It is Master of the TDS, and I am joined by my lovely wife. Writing Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Indeed. The segment where we summarize all the psycho for you. Just a scattering of topics throughout the week, all summarized into one neat little package for you to consume at your leisure. You're welcome. But yeah, we got a couple topics to discuss today, so without further ado... Let's begin with our first client, the Quantum Leap Reboot. A flurry of recent casting announcements have revealed the actors who will comprise the principal cast of NBC's upcoming Quantum Leap reboot, with those attached ranging from Cowboy Bebop's Mason Alexander Park to Ghostbusters' Ernie Hudson. Now, Ernie Hudson I'm not exactly opposed to. No, he was not Ghostbusters after all. Mason Alexander Park? N- not really my speed? No. Look, Quantum Leap itself was a show that was... You know, it was an interesting show for its time, and it would be an interesting show now. I would say it was revolutionary. It ended off really badly, so this would be a nice opportunity to kind of have it kind of pick up the pieces and maybe fix what went wrong. Mm-hmm. The only issue I have here, and again, I lo- would love to see a Quantum Leap reboot. I'd have no problem with it. The only issue I have is the current society that we were living in right now. Yeah, it will ruin it. I've heard some good things, and I've heard some bad things. So my concern would be that they would ruin it. Uh, My hope is they don't. Uh, But from some of the casting and some of the things I've heard mentioned and some of the possible things they can do with this show and take it in directions that it never really needed to go to. Which we all know they'll probably do. uh, That's what concerns me. Now, again, keep in mind that Quantum Leap was always a show that was very diverse. It was a show where, you know, this guy jumped into the bodies of other people and lived as them for a couple days or whatever. And the idea was that they helped them through hardships and stuff like that. So it's not exactly abnormal for it to, you know, explore certain tropes. I'm just concerned that that's all it's going to do and the story will be thrown to the wayside. Because they don't focus on story anymore. Yeah. And that's my concern. Again, I really, really hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that this show is really, really good, and they do a really good job. And they have some of the original people working on it, so, you know, there is hope. And it's not necessarily a reboot. It's actually, like, a sequel continuation of it. That's what they're saying it is, anyways. But it's still probably going to be bad. I really hope I'm wrong, but with everything going on and the track record of, you know, sequels and reboots these days, I I don't have high hopes. Uh, I I hope I'm wrong. I hope it gives us something good to watch. Because it would, A, give me a reason to go back and watch the original Quantum Leap. Which I have never seen. And it would, you know, give me some incentive to watch, you know, mainstream stuff again. Not everything mainstream, mind you. But the idea would be if this was something good, I would support it. That's all we want. Mm Mm-hmm. But uh, again, we'll have to see. They are getting some of the original people back and they're continuing the story. So at least it's not a complete, like, reboot. But I still have my concerns And, you know, if they lean too much in either direction with the show, it could potentially, even if they mean well, go off the rails. Yeah. Basically just don't have any high expectations for this. Let's hope it goes well. But without further ado, I think we can leap to our next subject, right? Sure. On to the next client. Lily Singh and the Muppets. The Muppets' longtime house band, The Electric Mayhem, is ready for the big time in a new series with Lily Singh coming to Disney+. Plus. This is gonna be a train wreck, or is that an insult to train wrecks? I, I, I don't even know. Disney has not handled The Muppets well. No. That doesn't mean that some of their shows with The Muppets haven't been well-received. And by well-received, I mean like, oh, it's a decent show. <laughs> uh, but they've not handled The Muppets well since acquiring them. And... Bringing back fan favorites and then mashing them together with someone who's completely unlikable, not funny, and being propped up by mainstream media just because of who she is. And what she is. That's kind of stupid. Now, if you guys don't know who Lily Singh is, she is supposedly a comedian. She was originally a YouTuber, from what I remember. She should have stuck with YouTube. That, and she's vehemently not funny. Not at all. If you like her, you're more than welcome to, but I personally don't think she's funny. She has never made me laugh. I've never even laughed out of pity. No, none of her jokes make sense. I can't watch any of her stuff. They're cringe. And you're going to take a property that you've already mismanaged and pair it with someone who is literally a walking, talking train wreck. Don't insult train wrecks. What else am I supposed to call this? Dumpster fire? 
Or is that an insult to dumpster fires? I don't know. All I know is that I think train wreck is applicable because this is going to be something that you're going to not want, but you're also not going to be able to look away from because I guarantee they're going to try to use this to prop up Lily Singh as well. Mm. And it's not going to go over well because if they focus too much on her and not much on the Muppets, it's going to do badly. And if they focus too much on the Muppets and not enough on her, she's going to get upset. Sigh. And don't quote me on it. You can go watch any of her stuff. I wouldn't recommend it. No. Uh, but... She, she's not funny. She's not someone I would have picked. But then again, Disney seems to be just, you know, keen on making really, really bad decisions. I guess that they seem to be very fond of puppets. Not just in, you know, shows, but like in their... Company? Uh-huh. And so I guess if you're thinking of it like that way, I mean, Lily Singh could qualify as a puppet because she doesn't seem to have original thoughts of her own. I mean, all of her jokes were scripted and they weren't even good. Uh, another Disney Plus show that nobody really wanted. Did people want a revival of the band Electric Mayhem? Yes. Sure. Did people want it to be paired with someone who's unlikable and already having her name associated with the show will kill a lot of the momentum? Absolutely not. But they don't care because it's not about the show. It's about the person they're trying to prop up. And it doesn't matter if she's not funny and doesn't get good reviews. They're going to keep pushing her because... That's what they do. Yeah, and there really isn't anything else to say about it. Nope. Uh, I, I have no hope for this. It's not even that I even have hope. This is going to be a train wreck. Calling it now. Train wreck. And that's an insult to train wrecks. Full steam ahead, Disney. Next stop, losing more money. Woohoo! Crash. Moving on to the next client. Obi-Wan Kenobi. In promotion of the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Disney+, Plus, actor Ewan McGregor provided a very detailed description of the state of his character at the beginning of the show. Basically, he says the character's pretty much the way we find Luke in The Last Jedi. Meaning it's going to be Last Jedi all over again. I really hope we're wrong, but as I said, I have no interest in Star Wars anymore. I have no problem with Ewan McGregor. I think he did a good job at Obi-Wan. Absolutely. Uh, I think Hayden Christensen did a good job as Anakin. Absolutely. I don't think this show's going to be respectful to the lore. No. Uh, and already having him come out and say like, oh, he's going to be broken and defeated and whatever. Then how is he going to become the Obi-Wan that we know? Unless he gets a character arc in this TV series, which they're not likely to do. I, I really, really hope... But this is good, but we've already heard and it's been confirmed multiple times that Kathleen Kennedy has her hands all over the show. I wasn't planning to watch it. We'll probably make some content on it. Mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind, we won't be watching it ourselves, so you can take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for them to kind of tear him down because it seems the only thing they're able to do these days to prop up characters that nobody really likes otherwise. And I'm not saying that this won't be a decently entertaining show. I'm saying that the point of the show may not be exactly what we want and may not be something that's complementary to the lore already established. And if that's the case, I mean, yes, there'll be people who like it, but... Just because they pull out laser swords and smack each other around a little bit, I'm, I'm not really going to suddenly be sold on it and suddenly think that Star Wars is safe. Technically, they're condensed plasma beams, but yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I, I see this, and, you know, it used to be where I would see them, you know, redo doing something Star Wars related, and they were hearing that they're bringing back Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen would make me very entertained or excited. Yep. Not anymore. Yeah. I was watching the trailer for, the, for Kenobi, and I felt nothing. I thought Luke Skywalker pretending to pod race was cute, but that was it. And the one thing I've heard a lot about is that they're planning to have a lot of this focus on Princess Leia, which is interesting because she's the only character not shown in the trailer. She's also on an entirely different planet. They don't care about the lore. Of course they don't. They never do. It's why everything these days sucks. And then they get mad at you if you don't like it because... It doesn't matter that we haven't actually come up with anything original and that we have to recycle characters that were actually good to make our characters look better. You, you, you don't like it, meaning means you're a bigot. Bingo! I just, I have no interest in this anymore. We'll chronicle its demise, as we've mentioned multiple times. Uh, but I have no plans to see it. We do not have Disney+. Plus. If you want to see it, go ahead. But I have no hope for this one. Nor I. 
Let's move on. Our next client is Amazon and Kratos. A new rumor suggests that Sony's popular God of War video game franchise may soon receive a live-action television adaptation courtesy of Amazon Studios. That's gonna be bad. I'll be honest, I haven't played many of the God of War games. I haven't really either, but I know enough. And considering how we've seen Halo, that TV series already going down the toilet before it even comes out, I don't have any hope for this. That, and also, since when have video game adaptations been good? I think the only one that I can think of that was actually decent, that's one that's actually gained a lot of traction, is the Sonic movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't mind the, the Assassin's Creed movie. It wasn't accurate. No, but I enjoyed it. As an action movie, sure, fine. But I, I, I don't want to see a live-action television adaptation of this because we all know they're just going to change it. Mm-hmm. Because it can't be you know, respectful to the lore and established people, it has to be changed because unless you can see yourself in it, then you can't relate to it, which is garbage, by the way. And everybody knows that. Amazon is just getting its hands on all these different, like, IPs, and it's just like, oh, make a TV show, make a TV show, make a TV show. And I'm not saying there hasn't been ones that have been good. I've heard good things about Reacher. Mm -hmm. But, like, we've heard a lot of bad things about Lord of the Rings. Wheel of Time. And they're putting, like, the same people in charge of this, and it's just like, uh, why? Bad idea. I mean, with the God of War franchise, haven't they already turned one of the gods, who's supposed to be Scandinavian, into a black woman? I don't even care anymore. It just gets to the point where they keep doing this, and it's just like, you look at it and you just go, oh boy, look, how predictable. Something else for us to report on. Yeah, so look, we'll, we'll keep doing it, we'll make content on it, until you stop. Even if they were putting, like, decent people on this, who really wants to see a God of War video, uh, a God of War live-action TV series? They keep taking IPs instead of making anything new, which is sad because I remember times when new things would come out that weren't based off of books or anything else, and I'm not saying that they haven't made some good things based off of books or other things. But, like, what happened to creativity? It's, like, dead these days. Mm -hmm. The Witcher TV show hasn't been very accurate to the games. Or the books. It's not even that. It's that, like, when was the last time we saw something original come out of Hollywood? We don't. Because they literally are hiring more and more people based on these quotas they need to fill, rather than people who actually know what they're doing, can create coherent, well-written characters and stories. And so we keep getting more of the same sludge that they're trying to say, hey, please drink this. And we're like, no. And they're like, well, if you don't drink it, you're racist or a bigot. And then you people who are scared of those words, which, again, are basically meaningless these days, <laughs> uh, drink up the sludge, choke, and say, it's good. Give me more. Brainless. That's why I don't want to work in mainstream entertainment anymore. But, yeah, not really interested in this at all. Hopefully the rumors are false. Uh, if they're not, I mean, it could be good. But I, I don't think so. I would hope that maybe the people who are doing, are doing Reacher get put on this. Because then maybe they have hope. Uh-huh. But otherwise, I do not see good things for this. No. Let's move on. Next client is One Piece. Netflix upcoming live action adaptation of Ichihiro Oda's iconic One Piece has revealed that it has added six new actors to its cast all of whom will be portraying major characters from the series' opening story arcs. I have plenty to say on this. I'll let you take the wheel here. Yes, because I'm the one who actually likes One Piece. The person they have playing Alvida is, a, is overweight, but she's not overweight enough, which they're prob someone's going to complain about, I tell you. Plus, she's Latino when Alvida is strictly Caucasian. Uh, the person they have playing Kobe, they have it say he's a they-them, which I am assuming is based purely on the fact that Kobe as a character has pink hair. The person playing Buggy, the clown, is actually handsome? And Buggy is supposed to be hideous? Born with a literal clown nose? The person playing Garp? Eh, I can see that. And, uh, Arlong. That is the biggest concern. They're having a black guy play Arlong the fish man. A, uh, race of people with superior strength and abilities to humans who have the physical characteristics of fish and are discriminated against by humans. You really want to have a black person playing that? It must be because they're trying to go for authenticity because they seem to discriminate against black people all the time and they just accuse everybody else of doing it. 
So they're just like, might as well, we just stick this here. That way we can make this an allegory for not just the discriminating against them for being fish or anything. We can say, this is an allegory for how we treat black people and we need to do better. But why? It's fiction! Because it's fiction. Because they feel like they don't really care. Now, that's not to say that these actors can't potentially work in the end or actually do a decent job. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is when you already come out before you even made the show and you're already showing things that show that you're not respecting the source material and you're making changes, what that tells anybody who is fans of the show is that you are not caring about the lore, which then tells us what else are you going to change? Because if you're okay changing key elements of the story just because you need to be inclusive and diverse, then what else are you going to change? They're going to make Gold Roger a wimp, calling it now. The original King of the Pirates? They're going, totally going to make him some kind of wimp. Watch. I don't know. Look, the track record for adapting anime has been really terrible. I think the only thing that I've seen that was anime that was live action that was done well was Alita Battle Angel. I still need to watch that. That was pretty good. And it's funny because the one thing they did well, you don't hear about anymore because it was put out at the same time as Captain Marvel. So they kind of made them compete against each other, which made no sense. Mm -hmm. I just don't have any hope for this live action series. I really don't. The, like, like I've said before, the person they've chosen to play Sanji looks better to play Frankie. But the one thing they did right is that they kept Nami a redhead. I have, I'll be honest here, and this may make people upset, but... I am not a big fan of One Piece myself, and it's not because it's not a good story. It's because, for me, I need things to kind of move forward at a somewhat faster pace. When you don't respect the source material, when you don't respect the fans who have kept the franchise around, who have made it what it is, it tells the fans that you don't care enough about the story. And if you don't care enough about the story in its minor elements, then you're not going to care about the story's major elements either. I, I, I Again... One Piece for me, not that interesting because, again, it, it doesn't go at a fast enough pace for me. Personally, I still need to catch up. But uh, I'm not looking forward to this. I don't think Netflix track record is good. I think even if they have the person, you know, the who made One Piece, you know, involved, that doesn't mean he has the control that he thinks he has. He is more focused on actually finishing the series. I don't know. Yeah, sorry, Oda. I hate to see your creation destroyed, but they are going to do it. Stick to manga, everybody. Our next client is the female Robin. Despite surviving the leap from her debut in Dark Knight Returns to both DC Comics' current continuity and a cameo in the Titans TV series with her original appearance intact, Carrie Kelly has been announced as the next redhead comic book character to receive a race swap in their proper live-action debut. Now, this is a character that most people have not heard about because it was n she was never popular. Yeah, well, she looks a little even weirder here because I, I had put the, the character, the, the person they're having play her, his face on her. <laughs> Do I have a problem with the female Robin? Not really. But again, keep in mind who's doing this. It's the CW, so it's going to be garbage. Yep. Point blank. Garbage. Now, you can already tell it's not a good character because she's using a slingshot. Slingshots in cartoons are generally used by the characters who are weak. So that tells me that this was never a strong character to begin with. I don't know. It it does. She doesn't even look like an appealing character, but of course they have to bring her in because it's Gotham Knights and they need to have strong women because it's the same people who make Batwoman. That doesn't mean we're against strong women roles. Just Batwoman's been garbage and we all know that they are not going to do a good job with this one. It's not something I'm making up. It's objective fact. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see them ruin all the characters here. Oh, wait, that's right. I'm not going to watch it, so I don't care. Uh, but uh, it just goes to show you that the CW are hypocrites. They're doing this kind of stuff, and they bring in a woman, and it's not enough. It needs to be changed even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no hope for the show. <laughs> it's on the CW, so it was already, before anything came out about it, they were saying, oh, the Batwoman people are going to be put on this show. It was already dead. How did they even have the money to make this? I don't know. I think Yellow Flash mentions that he thinks it's a money laundering scheme at this point. Probably. Which, again, would be something normally I'd be, like, very doubtful of. But, I mean, I can't exactly deny it. No. We can't dispute it either. Didn't have hope for the show. And now, even more don't have hope for the show. Not that I had any to begin with. But put it this way. Somehow they made me have even less hope when I already didn't have any. That's possible? I don't know. <laughs> 
It's Batwoman writer, so I guess anything's possible. Oh, dear. Somehow, Black Joker has returned. Da, da, da! No one cares. Yep. And our last client of the day, Tom Taylor. Again. Oh, boy, it's my old friend, Tom. How you doing, Tom? Oh, wait, that's right. You have me blocked. DC Comics and writer Tom Taylor's gay Superman book, Superman Son of Kal-El, completely fell out of the top 50 sales charts for the month of February. Wah, wah. Now here's the thing, he's come out with a bunch of different things to show that his thing is doing well, which is by looking at the Amazon bestseller lists, which, and the rating of it, which doesn't mean anything. Amazon bestseller list props up Star Wars The High Republic comics. And as you could see him here, he's being pulled up by Superman while he's clutching his pearls. <laughs> you had fun with that one. Yes, I did. Uh, hey, Tom, got a minute? Yeah, you do. Let's be honest. You don't have much work to do. Unless they need a character, you know, changed to be gay or not gay, you know, you're, you're on call for that, right? You said that last time. Yeah, and nothing's changed since then. Good point. Here's the thing, Tom. If you had just stayed quiet and not said anything, maybe what you had to say would make sense. Now, it doesn't make sense, because you're trying to disprove people who are using charts that you used to try to prove that your thing was good, and you're trying to use the Amazon bestseller list and the reviews for your book to justify that it's good. Have you seen the numbers of how many people have actually reviewed it, Tom? Yeah, you have eight critics who reviewed it and 25 regular people. It's definitely breaking new ground, except it's underground because it's in negative numbers. Ouch. Or we'll get there. But here's the thing, Tom. And this is where your argument gets destroyed. First off, you're a coward, which I've mentioned multiple times. And I'm going to mention it again because that's what you are. Let's be honest. Never even spoke to you. Blocked me off Twitter preemptively. Not sure why. Maybe he knew that I could tear him a new one. You usually do with crazy people. If you're so sure your book is good, then you wouldn't have to make as many tweets that are shown here against, quote, the haters, end quote. To prove yourself right. He has a point. Because if you were so sure that you were doing well and that you were getting all this stuff, then guess what? What? You wouldn't have to say anything at all. So it sounds like what's happening here is that people are, you know, hitting you on your, where it hurts, your ego and your wallet. And so you're trying to justify to Papa DC that you belong. You don't belong, Tom. Yeah, you are a sorry excuse for a writer. And that's an insult to sorry excuses for writers. And yeah, and as I said, you're a coward. And chances are you won't unblock me and you won't ever see this. But if you do, just want to remind you that you're a coward. Continue to clutch your pearls. We all know the truth. And the more you try and super deflection. Tom Taylor used super deflection. It wasn't very effective. He'd have to be effective at all for it to be not very effective. <laughs> Good one. I guess he's effective at uh, tanking comic sales. Boom. Yeah. So uh, continue to super deflect because you're also super going to fail. Much. And with that being our last client of the day, it is time to reveal the diagnosis of the week. And we have a diagnosis that we've used before, but we feel it's really relevant for today. Do tell. So our diagnosis for the week is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Please explain. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a phenomenon where basically people who are very, very unskilled are so unskilled and so incompetent that they actually think that they're competent, which is something that we get shown all the time. For example, Tom Taylor, uh, Amazon, a bunch of other things that we've discussed, Obi-Wan, all this other stuff. People who are not doing well and are so caught up in the delusion that they are the morally superior people and that they are better than everybody else, they're so used to clutching their pearls and being the victim that instead of looking in and going, hmm, maybe something's wrong with me and how I'm behaving, it must be everybody else because they can't possibly be wrong. So they have made it so that their skills are so much higher hyped up than they actually are. And so even while they are failing, they will do what's called failing upward in a sense where they will usually get other things handed to them because of their deflection and because of their adamant that they're doing well. And that's why I think the Dunning-Kruger effect fits very well here because these people are definitely unskilled, so much so that they think that they're skilled and will continue to do the same things that are continuing to tank their industries and their careers as a whole. I agree. And now we go to the remedy of the week. And since we owe a lot of what's been going on lately and the influx of subscribers to 
Josiah Rises, and the Geeks and Gamers team, we thought it would only be helpful that they scratch our back, we scratch theirs. So this week, we are sending you to one of the newer members of Geeks and Gamers, Erudy, who runs Geeks and Gamers Tabletop. They are the, as it says in their title, they are the team of Geeks and Gamers that focuses on Dungeons and Dragons and other such games. So if you are a fan of tabletop role-playing games, go check out Geeks and Gamers Tabletop. Yeah, and he only has 500 subscribers as of the time of making this, and we can do better than that. Come yes. on. Yes, yes we can. So head on over there, grab your dice, and let him know that Gothic Therapy referred you. Indeed. But yeah, that's all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on, so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. You can also find links in the description to all of our socials, our Discord, and our merch. Do go check those out if you'd like. And yeah, stay tuned for an Imaginalysis and a Raven Raves. Later this week. That's all we have for today. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Gothic Therapy, out.